Let's talk about Jeremy Swayman and everything that's going on with the Boston Bruins and the Netminder. If you're a new subscriber, welcome at that like button notification bell. I want you to comment down below your thoughts on the situation, guys. Swayman, how much does he want as an RFA? A guy that's played under 150 NHL games, a guy that has put up great numbers and been just a stud in the net for the Boston Bruins, but also was sharing the net with a Vesna winner in Linus Allmark. Now Allmark gone. Swayman sees himself having all the leverage, but at the same time, the Bruins unknown of what Swayman is without Allmark. So this is just like such a tough situation, right? Like if you're a Boston Bruins fan, you probably look at the situation going, Cam Neely, what are you doing with these comments? And we'll talk about the comments that Cam Neely made, but also as an organization, why, and this is probably more towards Don Sweeney, why trade Allmark? and give Swayman all that leverage. So let's go through it because I think these statements are crazy. I think at the end of the day, it just caused like a riff that might not be able to be repaired at this point. And I'm going to rant about it for all Bruins fans watching. And that's just kind of the perspective. So this is how it started, at least in terms of the chaos. So you've got everyone important at least in terms of a Bruins perspective outside of players so this is what it looked like you see Cam Neely and Don Sweeney in the middle and this is the clip since you say you were surprised Cam can you share any of the specifics here be it uh, what his ask is in terms of dollars or term um well, I don't want to get into the weeds with what his ask is, but I know that I, <clears throat> I have 64 million reasons why I'd be playing right now. Since you say you were surprised, Cam. And then you, you look at Corpusalo being named the opening night starter, which is crazy. And then Corpusalo himself doesn't even know. Says no one has told me yet. So after all this, from the comments from Cam Neely about 64 million reasons, so everyone's getting the idea that he got offered an eight by eight million dollar contract, something to total 64 million over the contract. Lewis Gross, the agent of Jeremy Swayman, comes out publicly going. Normally, I do not release statements or discuss negotiations through the media. However, in this case, I feel I need to defend my client. At today's press conference, $64 million was referenced. This was the first time that number was discussed in our negotiations. Prior to the press conference, no offer was made reaching that level. We are extremely disappointed. This was not fair to Jeremy. We will have to take a few days to discuss where we go from here. Oh my. Like When that dropped, I was like, fire started. Chaos. The rift got worse once Cam Neely made those comments. This is tough. So, guys, I'm going to make a video coming up this week talking about potential trades. Now, because it has to be a conversation now. Even if Jeremy Swayman signs in 48 hours and they get into a room together, they figure it out. At the surface level right now, I don't think, I mean, myself included, there's many people out there that think this could be repairable at this time. Like, two public comments. Everything's going through the media. Everything's a bunch of games right now you have jeremy swayman who recently appeared uh online and and through a podcast i'll drop the pod uh shout in the description but yeah like that's the thing is jeremy swayman has also appeared publicly but not spoken on this public per se but at the same time he also if you guys go watch he talks about how he wants to put respect on the goalie market he wants to set up uh i would say like ceilings of cap for future goalies, so like raising that floor on what goalies and the elite goalies in this league can make. So there's just so many perspectives here, and I think specifically, this is a nightmare for the Boston Bruins, like an absolute nightmare. And then everyone's gonna go, "Oh, John, you're all happy." Well, let's go rant mode. Let's go change for a second from <laughs> to Bruins fans. This is like not good. Cam Neely, what are you doing? Don Sweeney, what are you doing? You 
you lose all the leverage when you trade Allmark. Allmark did not want to go. He wouldn't waive his no-movement clause before that. You finally convinced him to go to Ottawa, a, a division rival or a division comp- opponent, and, and you trade him and lose your leverage on Swayman. I just, all the levels of this, I don't understand. It'd be one thing if we looked at the trade in terms of Allmark and said, oh my, like, we were going to get so much more a year ago, and now, like, it, I felt like it was always going to be underwhelming for Allmark. So why not just wait? It was already underwhelming. You didn't get this amazing deal for Allmark. So why rush it if that was what you got? And I think that's what Bruins fans thought. When you trade Allmark before Game 7 of the Cup Final, why? Why? You couldn't wait until October... Don Sweeney, you couldn't wait till November. Let Allmark play some games. Oh, you were worried about his value going down because of his play. Has he ever shown, outside of the injuries in the playoffs, that his play has gone like this? Because I think it's been like this in his career. So again, maybe there's a lot to go, like a lot to kind of understand that we don't know. And maybe there's a lot we, we just won't know at all. Or maybe we'll find out. I don't know. My point is, on the surface, this looks really bad on so many levels. It looks bad from the time they traded Allmark, the time they did, all the way to Cam Neely going 64 million reasons why he should sign. So, crazy stuff. And now Lewis Gross releasing that statement. The big one for me is we will take a few days to discuss where we go from here. That's not good. That's not good. You don't say that if you think that there's a potential out here. So, my thing is, like I said, I'm going to make a video This was a crappy move by Cam Neely. This was a crappy move altogether for the organization. And if you're a Bruins fan, you have to be pissed off. Uh, I think realistically, I saw a scenario here where you meet in the middle and Swayman gets signed for like $9 million per year, $8.5 million per year on a long-term deal. It's really bad that 64 was thrown out as a number from Cam Neely, the Boston Bruins side, and then you have the agent just full out denying it. So at the end of the day, we don't know who's lying because the agent could be just, this is kind of some disaster recovery or just damage control for the agent, right? Like putting that number in the air. The goal of that, at least again on the surface, is Cam Neely trying to put some shade, trying to put some negative light on how Jeremy Swayman and his agent have handled the negotiations. Well, now, reality alert here is no one knows the truth. You have your goalie disgruntled. You have the agent of your goalie disgruntled who's already a tough agent to deal with. And you know what? I see two scenarios in this. Either one, it's so bad that Swayman just like threatens the Bruins so hard that they have to trade him. Or two, it, this goes into like close to the December deadline. Like William Nylander, who also is represented by Lewis Gross the agent of Jeremy Swayman. So keep that all in mind, guys. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. Hopefully all this info helped. Gave you guys a little bit of background. Uh, Jeremy Swayman, restricted free agent. Young Goldie has played less than 150 NHL games. Whose side do you guys agree on? Subscribe, like, comment, notification bell. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.